Man, this is absolutely crazy. And I don't even know if it's really all too much of a thing. You know, like, this isn't really being discussed anywhere. It's not being talked about by anybody in our chat, the comment section, or anything that I've seen on Twitter. In fact, it's just a little piece of information that we're taking from the fourthperiod.com. And we're making this the early video today because both of these teams are actually playing against each other at 4 p.m. PST, 7 p.m. EST later tonight. So that will give those two fan bases ample opportunity to check out this video that talks about their teams. Today, we're going over onto David Panyota's the fourthperiod.com and we're talking about this article over here this is the NHL trade watch list for 2021. The top 40 players' assets in the league that could indeed be part of trades or trade conversations heading towards the NHL's trade deadline. I'm recording this video the morning of March 22nd. It's about 1 a.m. in the morning right now. And this little article is accurate as of March 21st, 10 a.m. Eastern. So just... 24 hours and a little bit-ish ago before I'm recording this video over here. If you take a look at this article, there are indeed so many names, so many players talking about who these players are, the situations they are part of with their hockey teams, and the interesting part is on every single one of these players, or actually not every single one of them, some of them, there are indeed teams that they are linked to in the little aside piece. So, what I did onto this article was I kind of just scrolled down, took a look at it, because I was thinking, you know, it's updated as of yesterday. The day that I was reading this, it was actually updated that day. So I was like, you know, it's probably just an interesting thing to look at. And as I scrolled down, I tried to look for some of the teams that I cheer for, and I came across number 21 on the NHL trade watch list here on the fourth period. The name of the player is Eric Goodbranson, an Ottawa Senators right-handed defenseman. And it says here the Sens might try to hold on to local kid Goodbranson and keep a veteran presence on the blue line. But playoff teams interested in a big, physical depth defenseman will be calling. And it says right underneath, the two teams that he has been linked to are the Montreal Canadiens and the Edmonton Oilers. So what is up, viewer out there watching this video, Legorox back here, and today we're talking about Ottawa Senators defenseman Eric Branson and whether or not the Canadiens or the Oilers could actually go out there and acquire this player. Now, if you know who I am as a hockey fan, you know exactly why I'm making this video, talking about this player and these teams instead of any of the other dozens of combinations that exist on this fourth period website because there are 40 names listed on here on this little article and there are teams linked to some of them other players have other stories and all that stuff so there are stories to cover from this piece but why exactly am i doing good branson montreal edmonton first because to me it's just super ridiculous kind of thinking about it because let's just go over the profile here shall we Erica Branson for the Ottawa Senators is a 29-year-old 6'5 right-handed defenseman signed through this year at $4 million AAV. This season, he's at 3 points in 33 games played, 47 penalty minutes, and a minus 15. Now, points were never really Erica Branson's strong suit. You take a look at everything that he has done making the NHL since he was drafted back in 2010, and he was never really a point producer. That's kind of not really his game. He's always been a shutdown, defensive defenseman guy who could be physical and who provides some good leadership qualities. That's what the Florida Panthers fan base really liked about Eric Branson when they took him back in 2010, and as he developed throughout their system as a guy that many people believed would become one of the eventual captain candidates when he hit his prime. However, after Eric Branson was traded to the Vancouver Canucks for Jared McCann, he was one of the worst players I have ever seen suit up in a Vancouver Canucks uniform that stayed here for an extended amount of time. He played three seasons with the Vancouver Canucks, the third one he got shipped out to the Pittsburgh Penguins in exchange for Tanner Pearson, whom I just absolutely cannot believe the Vancouver Canucks were able to snag up with Good Branson as the return. 
but he seriously was, for the three years he was here in Vancouver, one of the worst defensemen on the team. And I say that with no hyperbole, I think a lot of Canucks fans who watched Good Branson play can acknowledge that, sure, he was a good guy, like we knew the team loved the guy. He was good with the media, he spoke well, he was seen as a leadership figure in that locker room. It's why a lot of Panthers fans were upset that they ended up trading Good Branson away all those years ago. I still made the video on my channel, there's the reaction video by the way to the initial trade back in like 2016 or whenever it was, but still. Eric Branson was supposed to be a physical, big, hard-to-get-around shutdown demon. Instead, the physical element to his game wasn't really there. There wasn't really a lot of body checking or big immobilizations of opposition coming from Good Branson. There was mostly just giveaways and him honestly getting walked a lot. And we saw some success out of Good Branson when he was traded to Pittsburgh. I think a lot of Penguins fans would come out and have a similar sentiment towards Good Branson and what he did with that team. I think a lot of Ducks fans kind of feel the same way, and Sens fans this year are experiencing that as well. Now, there isn't really too much to cheer about on the Sens blue line this year, aside from Thomas Shabbat and the wicked amount of minutes that that guy is able to play and maybe a few good plays from Nikita Zaitsev here and there. But for Eric Branson in the position that he is right now, I would be so shocked if the Oilers or the Habs went out there and said, hey, we want to use this guy in our playoff run. Because even though in theory, the package sounds great, a right-handed guy, he's big, he's honestly pretty okay when it comes to his skating. His stride isn't the best, but it's not the worst. He's a veteran. He's 29 years old. He was a third overall pick 10 years ago. He's in the final year of his contract at $4 million. If you can use some of that extra cap space you saved up by putting guys on LTIR waivers and the taxi squad throughout the season, you might be able to cash in on a guy like this, right? But just based off of what I've seen when he was here in Vancouver and the limited times that I have seen him with the Ducks, the Penguins, and now of course the Senators because Sens games are on here in Canada a lot, I really don't know if this is the kind of player that if the Oilers or the Canadians acquire, it makes their team better. Like, I really personally don't know. And I know I've been really harsh in this commentary, but that's just kind of me coming out there and saying my own opinion because I'm just a fan who watches these games. Obviously, I know Good Branson's a good professional hockey player, it's just... The fact is, here in Vancouver, he just really wasn't great. And taking a look at all the advanced analytics and all that, because, you know, the points, that's not really what we're looking at here. Just the overall level of play. All the advanced analytics over here on EvolvingHockey.com suggests that Eric Goodbranson is just a normal guy on this team. He's below average relative to his team in goals against per 60. He's just a little bit on the bad side relative to his team in goals four per 60. The Corsi numbers really aren't there, but hey, the Sens are kind of a team that has a lot of negative Corsi going around anyway. Good Branson is kind of in the middle of the pack there. So even though it's the Ottawa Senators, they are still are some players on this team that might be seen as valuable. It's just to me, for Edmonton or Montreal, I don't know if Good Branson is your guy. Like, really, you think Habs fans are super harsh on what they have already in Edmonton and Ben Sherratt? Wait till you get Good Branson. Oh my goodness, Vancouver fans had their fun talking about this guy for three seasons. I can't wait to see what Montreal fans would think. For Edmonton, if you guys really think you need defense and you're looking for a nice, stable, mobile defender who can go out there and just shut plays down, yeah, you're really not getting that out of Good Branson, I would think. At least when it comes to the market, I'm sure there would probably be somebody else who would have a similar cap implication towards your roster and who might be able to provide some more of those qualities. Who knows? I mean, the Pittsburgh Penguins took a chance on Good Branson all those years ago, and they ended up getting swept by the Islanders in the first round. So, Oilers fans, Canadians fans, talk to me in the comments what you think about Erica Branson, because obviously, you know, as I said, nobody is talking about this. This is just one part of David Pagnota's NHL trade watch website article thing, and I'm just pulling from it and saying, hey, there are two suggestions here for Erica Branson that can garner some huge discussion, and I just wanted to bring that here up on the channel because... To me, as a guy who watched this guy for years, I really don't know what I think about it. So, talk to me in the comments what you think. Let me know if you would want to acquire this guy. What would be the most who would give up to acquire this kind of guy? And Sens fans, hey, if you're out there trading good brands, and what would you want for your team in return? That certainly is an interesting conversation as well. But talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rolls 99. And, bye.